Hello everybody, I'm Nick and yes, it is finally happening. We are getting discriminated units in C-Shop at some point in the future, maybe in a few versions, two or three, we don't really know, because Microsoft has officially released the proposal about how they're thinking of implementing discriminated unions, which they call type unions in C Sharp. This has been the single most requested feature in C Sharp for a very long time now, actually. And we finally have an updated version of how they're going to look like. Now, a few months ago, Matt Stoggins and the lead designer of C Sharp reached out to me and he wanted to sit down in a call to talk about this feature and how they're thinking about bringing it into the language, but they don't exactly know how to do it. So they were collecting feedback and I gave my opinion. So I'm just thankful that I contributed somehow to this finally becoming a reality. Now in this video I'm just gonna go through the proposal and give my opinion. If you just want to read the proposal I'm not gonna keep you here so I'm gonna put a link in the description down below. See you in the next video just like and subscribe before you go. But for the rest of you who stay here I'm gonna go through the entire proposal. Maybe I'm gonna cut some things that don't find interesting and then we're gonna see some comments. So a proposal for type unions also known as discriminated unions. I think they don't call them DUs because they're not really the use type unions i think is a better name now if you don't know the motivation for getting a feature like this this feature exists in f sharp and it exists in other languages it's a very popular feature and it basically says that you have a method that can return either this 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 three types let's say and they're completely irrelevant to each other they don't have any hierarchy they don't have any inheritance there's none of that you can just sometimes return let's say an error sometimes you return not found and sometimes you return the object itself like a movie now what traditionally we do is we just return the movie and then for not found we return null and for any other error we throw an exception but that's very costly and exceptions in general when used to control controlled flow they're bad i really don't like them and many people don't like them which is why people are using either result types or the one of NuGet package that allows you to do that exact thing. Now, Microsoft, from what I've talked with Mads about, they did actually see how people are trying to solve the problem using NuGet packages and source generators, and they tried to take that as feedback in this feature. So let's see what the team came up with. And from what I understand, they came up with a few categories of these type unions to solve multiple problems. And each type of union, for example, standard, specialized, ad hoc, and custom, which is the four types we have currently, are trying to solve different problems. So for example, protocol serialization data transfers, that's part of standards, syntax trees, UI data models. Then you have specialized, which is in places to avoid allocations because performance was a massive, massive thing. When I spoke with Mads, this feature can actually go out of hand if it's implemented badly and Microsoft is being very, very cautious with this. And then you have ad hoc for the places where you just require an ad hoc discriminated union that you don't want to define into a type. And then we have custom. So let's take a look straight into what they have in mind. So standard union classes. A union class is a name typed union that declares all its member types in a single self-contained declaration. So it's basically like an enum where all the things that the enum can be are inside the enum. In this case, you have a union of name U and then you have class A, class B, class C. This union can represent any of those three types, which means you can actually have construction like this where you will be resolved if you do new A or new B or new C. Very similar to how it will work if you had inheritance, but it's not really inheritance. And then in deconstruction, you can have pattern matching to check if it is A, if it is B, if it is C. Very nice. And the good thing about this implementation where you have all the possible things a union can be is that you can have pattern matching on that union with exhaustiveness. So in the same way that with one of you would say dot switch and would force you to switch or match any of the types this union can have, type unions in C Sharp will allow you to switch and see there is no default entry here. It's not needed because we have exhaustiveness. We know exactly what this thing can be. It can't be anything else. So we don't have to handle a default state, which makes it a very elegant feature. Now for nullability, you still have nullability, through nullability notation, so you can have the question mark. And in terms of implementation, which doesn't really matter for what we're seeing here, but it would look something like this. So you have a closed attribute that allows the compiler to understand the type hierarchy is closed to subtypes. And then you can have the built-in records created to represent all the things that this union can have. For now, this looks very, very nice. Okay, yeah, you have to define a type, but I think that will be different when we go to ad hoc. Now we have specialized, which is union structs. Previously, we had classes and well, it's records, but records by default are classes. Here we have structs. Why? Because 
union structs allow you to have structs defined in you. So all of these things here are structs and that prevents heap allocations, which makes it very performant, which we kind of need because if you want to use unions, but still benefit from the incredible performance of C sharp, well, you can do that using a union struct. Great. I think the rest is basically the same. The construction and allocation is the same. Of course, nullability is the same too. And again, you have exhaustiveness. The only thing that changes behind the scenes from what I understand is the implementation. Now you have a union attribute on the struct and then all of these things are record structs and there's implicit and explicit operators created for you. And then you also have a union kind created for you. Now, someone pointed out already that this looks very similar to the implementation of DoNet. DoNet? don't know how du du net that's why it's called du net so yeah du net which is basically a simple source generator for du's and it has the same union on the record and generates these types behind the scenes and it allows you to do very similar pattern matching but you have to use an extension method or the match method you can't really do it using c sharp and the switch keyword so microsoft has clearly been getting inspired by other things but that's good because they see what the community really made and wanted and then bring it into the language. Just amazing. Now, there's also boxing as well, but that goes a bit too advanced. So I'm going to leave that on the union structs for those of you who really want to go in depth and actually read the blog. So I'm going to go straight into the most exciting part, in my opinion, and by the way, reflection also works, which is the ad hoc unions, which is probably what most of us will be using. And they're basically one of, or they're basically what we asked. So you refer to an ad hoc union using the or pattern syntax with parentheses. I don't know how I feel about this. And I don't know because could it be better to have just a single pipe operator? I think so. Now, would that be too similar to TypeScript? Yeah, but is that a bad problem? Like, I don't understand why we can't just have a pipe operator and be fine with it and not have the or. But in any case, the team will be collecting feedback. And by the way, Microsoft is definitely watching this video and everyone involved. So leave a comment down below. If you have feedback for the feature in this video, they're going to read it. Now you can give a common name if you want using the global using uh, statement on the top of your class. And then you can have an ad hoc union like this as if you made a class, but it's not quite the same. Uh, then you have construction the same way. So you have your own classes already, pre-existing classes. And you say that this thing can be either A or B or C. It reads very nice, but I would like to be more succinct because using just a pipe uses less space. And a big problem with discriminated unions, especially with the one of package, is because one of is using it as generic types, the declaration can get very, very long. So it's better to save more space horizontally than just saying or. But you know what? I'll take whatever I can get. You still have exhaustiveness. You can still switch. You can still have the same nullability thing. And you can also have equivalence. Same assignability. So you say A or B, X equals whatever. Or you can say that this is one of those three. It's basically what we wanted. I really, really like this. Subtyping as well. Chihuahua and CMEs. Well, everyone knows that Dachshund is the superior dog breed. But... I digress. I'm just glad that 20 years later, 21 years later, it's just getting these amazing game changing features. We also have uh, inference, type inference. So you will be dog, cat or bird. You can use the var keyword and the compiler will automatically realize, hey, this can be a dog. This is a cat. This is a bird. So this thing can be one of three. So nice. I'm actually very pleasantly surprised by this implementation on this feature because I think Microsoft is pleasing everyone. Microsoft have to please people who have never used it before and they don't know why they need it themselves because performance also matters and everyone who's been using one of and result types. And I think they do. This is awesome. And then in terms of implementation, and that's funny because C Sharp is becoming Java a bit, is ad hoc units are implemented through erasure and runtime checks. So they're held together with duct tape and dreams. But I'm sure they're going to try to make it as performant as possible. I think this is great. I think by far ad hoc unions is the thing I'm going to use the most. I love it already. It's awesome. And then we also have custom unions where if you need to declare a union type that cannot be specified as a union class or a union struct, you may declare your own class or struct and have C Sharp recognize it as a custom union type. So you can add, for example, 
uh, the closed attribute over here and then you can implement that union type which is just a class really uh, on any of the other classes basically just extended and this will also be acceptable and same thing for structs then you also have things like common unions so we're gonna have finally the option union which an option can either have some value or no value very very common in many many languages and in c sharp you had to write your own version of this or the new package finally we're getting it so if you don't find something or you do find something you don't even need to have null this thing is an option it can be either some value take the value or no value use the default very nice a result another very common a result can either represent success with a type associated to that success or failure with an error so you no longer have to throw an exception you just return an error object and that's the only thing you need to allocate you don't need to allocate and throw the exception and this massive stack trace and you're not shooting yourself in the foot when it comes to controlling the flow with exceptions now there are more late proposals which i do recommend you click that link you read because this is a massive feature when it, all the feedback we can get. I don't think this will make it into the language until C Sharp 15. And even then, I think it's going to be in preview until C Sharp 16. But I do think that any feedback we give now will bring it to our hands sooner. And then Q&A, which I'm actually going to leave out of this video because I want to live stream soon and actually go through all this with you in the chat. So subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. And when the stream is live, well, ring the bell and you're going to get notified. But now I know from you, what do you think about this? And what do you think about the way we're getting type unions finally in C Sharp? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.